We are now back where we left off last chapter, at Shigaraki's house, when he was not yet a sick psychopath. Midoriya approached the house in a relaxed manner and tried to ring the doorbell once, but before he could approach the house, his worst enemy appeared, namely his own shadow. He asked him on an Emo Sasuke Uchiha basis what it would change if he found out about Shigaraki's past. And this shadow was not only his shadow, but implied Shigaraki's version of how he sees Midoriya, and through which he also speaks. So simply put, it was Shigaraki. Deku replied that he was Naruto's successor, and therefore had an excellent command of talk no jutsu, and a good chance of getting through Shigaraki. But the latter was not particularly pleased with this answer, and was then checked by Bakugo, as he only got the answer to die. Shortly before Midoriya could get his Glock 18 out, LKW Man arrived and almost leveled the young Midoriya to the ground. However, he was just able to dodge, but realized that for some inexplicable reason, he could also be injured in this world. Imagine the world is watching you. You are probably the strongest individual on the planet, and you are the only chance to save the world. And then you die because a truck driver ran you over in a dream world that isn't actually real. That would be a big oops. However, Midoriya wasn't alone here, because the seventh user, Shimura, was also there. She knew exactly what kind of scene it was, and explained to Deku that they were deep inside Shigaraki's mind, and that the other users couldn't help them. Midoriya didn't care though, because he had Mommy Shimura with him. So, now they were at the moment of truth, the place where the bad thing happened back then, and everything went downhill from there. Shimura told Deku again that this was his child version, and that Midoriya had to attack him so hard that he would never get up again. Midoriya was of course overjoyed to hear this and set off at a sprint. However, he was surprised from above, and Stain jumped down on him and stabbed him in the shoulder. Or was it really Stain? Or was it Ray Destro after all? Or maybe it was Chisaki? It was absolutely irrelevant, because Midoriya simply boxed them away and jumped forward because he wanted to break into the house. He yanked the door open like in GTA, and suddenly saw a picture of Shimura and a little boy with a big gap in his teeth. A voice also said that this was his grandmother, so it was probably Shigaraki. Midoriya also thought to himself, Who the fuck is this? Shimura was still there and she almost couldn't believe her eyes, because this boy was Kotaro, Shigaraki's father. As Midoriya ran into the garden, we saw a clip of Shigaraki's sister, who obviously had the idea of creating a hero team with her brother, practically like FIFA Ultimate Team. But that wasn't all because when Midoriya came into the garden, we could already see Kotaro about to give Shigaraki a good smack. Midoriya knew immediately, Oh damn, shit's about to get down. Shimura just grabbed his mouth, absolutely shocked and at a loss for words. Midoriya realized that the little boy must be Shigariki and wanted to help him, but an invisible wall blocked him. He was blocked by Shigaraki's consciousness. And now we learn the whole truth, the truth about who was to blame for everything, because the father Kotaro made the speech of life. Shigaraki, that wasn't your grandmother in the picture. That was an ugly ass monster who abandoned her child, he shouted at him. Meanwhile, Shimura was already crying, because she was obviously the cause of the tragedy. Do you really want to know what heroes are? They're people who hurt their own families only to help complete strangers, he said afterwards. She was aware that she was passing on to Shigaraki, the trauma she had given her son, the hatred he had received through his loneliness. She blamed herself for simply going back to him after defeating All for One. Everything would have gone well. Kotaro was about to deliver the next blow to Shigaraki, but Midoriya went all out and yelled to Shimura for help, and they made it. He broke through the wall and were able to both stop Kotaro and comfort poor little Shigaraki. Kotaro disappeared because the scene was already changing to the next flashback. And this time we arrive at Armageddon, the night that everything changed for little Shigaraki, the origin of decay. I'm really looking forward to the next chapter. Do you think Midoriya will be able to save Shigaraki somehow? Maybe Midoriya will say, stop, stop. That's not right, Shigaraki. And everything will end perfectly. In any case, I'm curious to see how strong Deku's talk no jutsu will be and hope to hear from you again in the next chapter. Take care, my friends.